Rod Weber. Uh, Rod Weber here. Uh, where, where are we right now, if you want to say it? Uh, it's Public Square, I believe, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, and you've been here for a few days now, correct? Have you been like a part of the protests, or at least been here while protests were happening? Yeah, I've been here since Sunday, so it's my fourth day here. Uh, obviously, things didn't officially kick off till Monday. Uh, Sunday was, uh, you know, that was calm and cool. Monday, not so much. Yesterday, things definitely ramped up. The Alex Jones melee was a little bit weird. Uh, we noticed that the New York Daily News uh, thoroughly blamed uh, myself and Vermin Supreme for starting the Alex Jones riot, which I thought was an interesting, pe uh, you know, creative writing piece, uh, especially since Vermin wasn't even there. Uh, yeah. But I, I mean, as they said, uh, as some I don't political glad gad flies or regulars on the scene. So you, you find someone who's visible. They you know, okay, it's the flower guy. I get it. Um, but you know, I, I think you know both the uh, you know Vermin myself and there's other people out here trying to be peacekeepers, and uh, you see things going down. And we're not here to inflame things. Uh, I, if if anything, it's about like can we bring the tensions down? And that's why, you know, if I need to be loud, I've got a bullhorn. Uh, if it's time to do some flowers, I give a flower. If I in hugs, if we do a group home. Uh, you know, whatever whatever the case may be, to kind of chill people out uh, when things get thick. And, okay, so that, that's what you, uh, you, you're out here doing, what you feel you're doing. I guess what was the police response to that? Like, what happened to you this morning? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> funny you should ask that. Uh, so, uh, a friend of a friend uh, said, hey, you know, uh, we got a place to crash. I've been sleeping uh, in my car a lot with the traveling, and, you know, uh, you'd rather have a couch to crash on if you can. Uh, so, uh, yeah, went to sleep late, woke up at about 8 o'clock, banging on the windows. I'm thinking, are the neighbors upset? What's going down? I look up and my buddy's like, he's got, he had slept out on the couch on the porch. And so I see his hands go up in the air and FBI, Homeland Security, ICE agents, and local police were all there patting him down. A massive, a, an excessive uh, use of force for what turned out to be, they were looking for people they said uh, attacked the police uh, yesterday uh, with bottles and feces. Um, Did you see any of that happen? Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it was it was utter nonsense. Uh, to to my thinking, it was a shakedown. Uh, both me and Jose, uh, we, we were you know we're in our boxers. Uh, first thing that the, when the cop comes through the door, because uh, they had already pulled Jose out, he says to me, "Drop your pants." I'm like, whoa. whoa. He's like, I'm like, uh, I'm just trying to put my pants on. He's like, I don't know what's in your pants. And I'm trying to, okay, don't do the innuendos, not, not the time to make a joke right now. So I drop my pants and I'm like, well, I mean, if you want me to go outside, you really, uh, I, I really want to put on my pants. And <laughs> Yeah, so I think I, I watched them at music and you're like, I, I can't, I'm in my boxers, dude. Like, yeah. Which, uh, yeah. Right, so I kicked them over to him and that kind of cooled it down. Um, and, but I mean, what when it started to get weird uh, was that uh, Dan, whose house it was, uh, Dan and Brittany, uh, we thought they'd gone to work for the day. And so, and, and also, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of us folks are not so much about uh, giving out our personal information if we don't have to. And uh, so I was, I'm known, so I said, you know, I'm Rod Weber. They call me the flower guy sometimes. And, you know, I was cool with that, wanted to let them know I'm chill. Uh, but some of the other members of the group were not okay with that. And that got a little contentious and they're, they're trying to figure out, well, whose house is it? And we're like, well, we don't know the owners. Uh, usually, uh, something like this, it's renters. Well, who's the rent? You know, where are they? They're at work. And um, uh, but they heard a commotion upstairs, and of course, it's Dan. And so now they think that someone's lied or something. And so they pull out. The, and I set up my GoPro inside, so I had a, my my iPhone to film them out front. GoPro inside, so we I mean we could see later from the tape they pull out their guns, which definitely confirms um, you know Dan's end of the story, which was he was basically woken up with guns in his face and told to get outside, and this was all over uh, bottles of water and I guess feces. Um, and, and I mean, and, and my my words to them was, are, are, there, is, are you sure there's nothing else? I mean, do you, is this you really bought, you know, guys with AK 47s? I mean, there was literally like 20 of the various agents there, and oh my God! I mean, what, I, this is overthrown water bottles. It, nonsense. It's and a did, shakedown. It's a shakedown. Did they have any sort of search warrants or any Absolutely sort of like? Absolutely not. And, and um, Jose, who was there, he was very good at at uh, bringing that up. At that time, I saw my role as just not getting the camera taken away from me, so I kind of tried to lay back 
and Jose was the more vocal one at that time. And it was very clear they didn't have a search warrant. Even inside, when we watch the GoPro footage, uh, they're talking about, oh, we could definitely get a warrant. Uh, you know, there's enough evidence here, and I, which I don't even know what that is. But, you know, clearly they're incriminating themselves several times um, on camera. So I'm glad I was able to get them up. So this morning, like you've been here for four days, yeah. uh, your role is that you're a peacekeeper. If you think things are getting into, like high intention, you'll go up with some flowers and try to get some hugs. So I try, and sometimes kind of add some comedy maybe to the situation. Yep. And the response from the police was to come visit you in the morning with the FBI, DHS, uh, ICE. ICE. Yep. ICE was there, the immigration. Yep. And, and, there, and there was HSI, which I've never heard of either. It's a new one to me, HSI. And there was no social warrants, no nothing, and they basically just kind of like showed up with a bunch of guns and said, Yeah, a who lot was doing of guns. Yeah. A lot of, and big guns. Yeah. It was, uh, it was not a cool thing to wake up to. I want to ask, like, besides that, what has your experience been of the, of the RNC? Besides. The uh, well, you know, I, I, you know, like I said, I go to a lot of these, and it's kind of like a pop up city. It's a civilization with, it's almost like conventions are their own kind of city that just exists wherever they are. Um, so it's kind of like when you're traveling around, especially in the, it's Donald Trump. I've been to 37 of his rallies, and I always say it's you know it's not it's not Grateful Dead tour, it's Hateful Dead tour, or you know like. So why do you say that? Like, what's your perception of going to 37 Donald Trump rallies? Now you're at the Republican National Convention, which is sort of like the spectacle event of the Republican Party. Like, well, I mean, you get guys like Alex Jones out here. I mean, he was in the square yesterday, and uh, I mean, he's blathering on about. And I'm not behind Hillary as a candidate, but. Um, less so about Donald Trump, but uh, Alex Jones is out here and he's saying that it's going to be a police state under Hillary Clinton. And I'm thinking to myself, if you've been to these rallies, and I've been to at least a dozen, if not close to 20 of Hillary's rallies, they're just kind of like, eh, people show up, they're kind of iffy about her. But it's, you know, it's not like a police crackdown. You go to Donald Trump rallies, and yeah, there's a lot of guys with guns, and I've been beaten up, thrown over a table by his people. I've been ejected at least a dozen times, uh, roughed up by his followers, arrested twice in, you know, in New Hampshire, in Pennsylvania. Uh, Donald Trump has already shown us what a police state is like, and this stuff is, I mean, it's uh, Donald Trump you know, on, on steroids, you know? And so you would consider, like, right now, the policing is basically a police state. Like. Unfortunately, I mean, it's it's peaceful. At the, it's really peaceful at the moment, uh, but still, there's mad cops here. I mean, <laughs> um, what? Um, I guess, like, one final question is like, after the RNC, you know, they've they've nominated uh, Donald Trump. You say is sort of like this yeah. hate mon hate mongering spreading sort of force. I guess, what do you think the outlook's like after you know, as the election cycle continues and we gotta like keep hearing about all of this? Sort of gathering. Well, yes, he is a hate mongering tour de force. I would say that, but I'm, I, you know, uh, I, I've decided to to drop out on giving predictions on what's going to happen. I'd like to think uh, that I go forward with positivity. Try to just keep giving out flowers and hugs and smiles and focus on that for right now. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are angry, and I think we need to kind of uh, bring that mindset, uh, the universal connection that we have, bring it closer. So, you know, the, the people aren't like kind of in this constant fear state because, um, I mean, it's, it's doing something wrong to the frequency of humanity. And I, th I think we just need to tune into a new channel. All right. There's Rod, Rod Weber. That's correct, sir. All right. Thanks, Rod Weber, for talking to us. Uh, all right, sorry you. about your visit this morning. I'm glad hey. that it all turned out. At least nobody uh, heard. So, me too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm really glad about that. All right. You take care. I'll right. see you around. Thanks, dude. Yeah, peace. All right, everybody, uh, I guess we're going to just continue through the public square of the Republican National Convention. Uh, I don't know exactly where we're going to head to next. There's not a lot going on. It was mostly hanging out. Uh